Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. This is another tutorial in the series of tutorials Howard from IceFlowStudios.com and I are doing on web elements, inspired by the great folks over at 365psd.com. You can go there and download a free PSD every single day. Awesome little website. This is what we're going to be creating using Photoshop. Let's get started. I bring back the Photoshop interface and I'm going to go File, New, create a new document and I'm going to name it 3D Pill Button. And 1280 by 720 is the size we want. Hit OK. And we want to fill our background color with a very dark gray with just a little touch of blue in it, somewhat desaturated. So I'm going to open up my color picker here. And the color I want is right here. It's 1A3135. You can see very dark, somewhat desaturated blue. Hit OK. Alt Backspace will be Option Delete to fill that background layer. Great. Now we're going to go Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And we want to add 2% noise, distribution set to uniform, and just check on monochromatic. Go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to grab the lasso tool, and we're just going to create a very jagged selection here through the center of our, our document, just something like this. It doesn't really have to be anything uh, uniform at all. And then we're going to go Select, Modify, Feather. We're going to feather this selection by 150 pixels. Hit OK. You're going to see it's going to really shrink it down to a very small uh, selection size. Now we're going to go Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. And I'm going to name this layer Spotlight. And I'm going to set the blend mode to screen. And I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that our selection is going to become the mask. And we're just going to have this sort of spotlight dropped right in the center of our document. Great. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up the info panel. So we're going to go Window, Info. And I've got it right here, semi off screen. I'm going to collapse my adjustments panel. We want to take a look here at the W and H, the width and height. That's going to give us sort of a live as we draw size of our selection. Well, not for that tool, but for the rectangular marquee tool and also some of the shape tools. So grab the rounded rectangle tool, hotkey for that is U. Look to the control, the, the tool options bar, excuse me, and set the radius to 25 pixels. We want to draw out a 50 pixel tall pill button. The width doesn't really matter as much. So I'm just going to start drawing it out. I'm going to be watching the H there for height. And I want to get about 50. Right. Right about there. 51, 50, 51. Something like that should work just right. Now that we have this path selected, well, I'm going to get rid of my info panel. I'm just going to drag it right over here and drop it in one of those panel uh, groupings, one of the docks, if you will. And what we want to do is now go layer, new fill layer, solid color. And I'm going to name this button. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to ask me what I want color wise. And I'm going to fill it with a color. Let's go for 566A74. So it's kind of a very muted blue. Hit OK. And there we go. We can see that our path has created a vector mask for that solid color fill layer. Now that we've done that, let's duplicate this layer, Commander Control J. And I'm going to double click on the layer name and I'm going to name it Base. Now that I've named it base, I'm going to drag it beneath my button layer. Great. Now that I've done this, let's go ahead and just nudge it down a little bit. So I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to nudge it down. Let's go seven pixels down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've nudged it down seven pixels. If I double click on this layer and just set the, the color something crazy, like a pink, you can see that we just have this sort of area right beneath there. I'm going to hit cancel though. I don't want to do that. We are, however, going to change the color of this layer. So double click on the little color thumbnail right there. And we're just going to reduce the brightness here. You can see we've got the B. We're going to reduce that by 10%. So holding the Shift key, I'm just going to hit the down arrow key once. It's going to take me down to 35%. Great. Hit OK. Now that we've done that, you can see we have our face of the button and then sort of the side of the button, if you will. Select the button layer, and let's start applying some layer styles here. Go Layer, Layer Style, Gradient Over. What we want to do here in this gradient overlay dialog is we want to double click the gradient bar and we're going to create a simple gradient running from about, let's go 50% gray, so 50%, and let's bring it up to about 65% gray. So 65%, great. Now that we've got that, cool. I actually want to just pull this handle over just a little 85% just to give a little bit more of the light gray look. Hit OK, wonderful. And set the blend mode to overlay. You can see now that gray is simply interacting with that color beneath. Let's also apply an inner shadow. So go ahead and take inner shadow on, select it, and we're going to set this to normal. We're going to set the color of the shadow to white, and we're going to uncheck use global light, and I'm going to set this to negative 90. I want it to sort of add some light to the bottom area of the button. 
We're going to set the distance to 3 pixels and the size to 1 pixel, so it's going to be very small, just a very, very subtle blur. And we're going to set the opacity way down. Let's go with 10%. Okay, just like that. We're adding the base of our button. Very cool. We're going to hit OK here because I need to set the, my foreground color to white. So I'm going to hit the letter D. It's going to set my foreground and background color to the default black and white. And then I'm going to hit X, which is going to flip those two. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a stroke. So layer style, stroke. And what we want to do is something that's kind of interesting here. We're going to set the fill type to gradient. So our stroke is actually a gradient, as you see. We're going to select the gradient bar, and we're going to choose foreground to transparent. This is why we wanted to set our foreground color to white. So we're going white to transparent. Hit OK. I'm going to set the size to 1. And let's go with an angle of 90 degrees. You can see that that throws our stroke across the bottom. We actually want it to go across the top. So I'm just going to tick the little reverse button on brings that guy right up to the top. And then let's just reduce the opacity to about 60%. So just a nice subtle line going right across the top of our button. Go ahead and hit OK. Next, we want to select the base layer here. And we want to apply both a drop shadow and an inner shadow. So let's go up here to Layer, Layer Style, and we'll start with Shadow. The drop shadow, we're going to leave the blend mode on Multiply. We're going to reduce the opacity to about 20%. You can keep an eye on what we've got going on over here. Uncheck Use Global Light, set it to 90 degrees. Set the distance to 7 pixels, and we're going to leave the size at 5. I actually like 5. That looks great. Now we're going to go ahead and tick on Inner Shadow. And with the Inner Shadow, we're also going to remain at a blend mode of Multiply and a color of black. We're going to reduce the opacity to about 20 pixels and uncheck Global Light. And this time we're going to set the angle to negative 90. We want the Inner Shadow to be running across the bottom here. That's great. And we're also going to reduce the size of the distance to 2 pixels and the size to 3 pixels. Just like that, hit OK. Now that we've done all of that, let's go ahead and duplicate our button layer. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J after selecting it. And I'm going to rename this layer. So I'm going to double click it. And I'm going to rename this Stroke. I'm going to fill this layer with white. So I'm going to double click the color thumbnail, fill it with white. Great, hit OK. And what I want to do is drag this beneath our button and base right. that. I want to go Layer, Layer Style, and just clear the layer styles on this. I don't want any drop shadows inner shadows, anything crazy like that in here. So I'm going to go clear layer style, and then I'm just going to drag this guy all the way down beneath base. And now that I've got the layer down here, we want to throw a stroke around this, hence the reason we named it stroke. So we're going to go layer, layer style, stroke. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to set the size to something around 20. I want it to be a little under 20, though. I'm going to go with maybe 18, something like that looks cool. Notice how it's offset. Don't worry about that. We're going to adjust that in just a moment. And that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, my problem is I want to actually add layer styles to the stroke. So we want to chop the stroke out of this layer. We're going to do that by going Layer, Layer Style, Create Layer. That's going to take our layer style and convert it to pixel artwork. I'm going to shut off my stroke layer and just work with the regular stroke. Before we do anything, I'm just going to nudge it down a little bit to sort of center it within our pill button. And now that I've done that, I want to do two things. I want to apply a color overlay and I want to give it an inner shadow, just to give it a little bit of a cut look. And then we're going to go and apply a stroke to it, actually, as well. So let's apply the color overlay, layer, layer style, color overlay. And double click on the little color swatch. And the color I want to add is 2F3A40. Uh, so it's a very dark bluish gray. Again, pretty much what I did was selected uh, the color here in about the middle of the button and just set the brightness to about 25% lower than that. So something about like so will be great. Hit OK. And now that we've done that, we're going to add the inner shadow. So tick on the inner shadow. And I'm going to set the blend mode. This is going to be more of an inner highlight than an inner shadow because we're going to set the blend mode to normal and change the color to white. Hit OK. We're going to, or we're going to uncheck Use Global Light, excuse me, and set the degrees or angle to negative 90 degrees. It's going to throw it right across the bottom just like so. And I'm going to set the distance to 4, and then we're going to jack the size way up to about 15. So it's almost starting to wrap around the entire uh, inner area, just with an emphasis on the bottom. Then I'm going to reduce the opacity to 10%. And now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add the stroke. And this, this is a little complicated here. So let's take a moment and just look at it. We're going to go layer, layer style, stroke. And we're adding the stroke to this main outer shape that we created, which is in and of itself a stroke. We're going to add a one pixel stroke. So I'm going to set the size to one. We're going to leave it on the outside. That's fine. And again, we're going to create a gradient. So I'm going to go gradient. And the simple black to white gradient is exactly what I want. I'm going to set the angle to 90. 
That's going to put the white up at the top, the black at the bottom, which is fine. Um, actually, we're going to end up ticking on reverse because I do want the harsh white on the bottom. Um, and there we go. We've got the, the absolute base of our gradient set. Now we're going to go into the gradient editor and start playing around with this. Here's where things get a little bit tricky, but just hang with me and you'll be able to take care of it in no time. So I'm just clicking right here above the gradient parts and we're adding a new opacity stop, if you will. I want to select this center opacity stop and set the opacity to zero. Now I'm going to select the opacity stop above the white stop and I'm going to set that opacity to 30%. So we're just weakening the white part, leaving the black, and it's going to fade to nothing in the center. We're going to hit OK. The result is we're going to have a gradient that throws a dark line across the top, disappears around the center, and drops a very subtle line along the bottom. Once we've got that, let's reduce the opacity overall of the gradient stroke to 30%. You can see there's what we've got. Hit OK. Next, all we've got left to do is add some text to this button, which is going to be pretty quick and easy. And we want to create it in such a way that's going to allow you to then type any word you want without adding a ton of layer styles or changing all kinds of colors and things like that. Grab your text tool, and we want our fill color to be white. I'm just using the font Arial set to bold. And right now, I'm at 18 point, which hopefully should be fine. I'm just going to say, press me. Commit those changes, and I'm going to grab my Move tool, and I'm going to move it to the approximate center of the button. You can Command or Control click that vector mask, and then use the Align options right up here, which, heck, while we're here, why not just do it? Command or Control D to deselect. Now that we've done that, set the Blend mode here to Soft Light. It's going to almost make the text disappear, but don't worry, because we're going to sort of stack a couple effects here and do something kind of cool. Now we're going to go Layer, Layer Style. We're going to start with the Drop Shadow. Now, the drop shadow is going to be more of a, a highlight along the bottom and less of a shadow. We're going to set the blend mode to normal, and we're going to set the fill color to white. Once we've done that, set the opacity to 60%. Uncheck Use Global Light. Set the angle to 90 degrees. Distance of 1 pixel and a size of 0 pixels. Just a very nice little kick of light along the bottom sides of our letters. We're going to apply an inner shadow as well. We're going to go blend mode of multiply. Let's leave it as multiply. Fill color, or the color of the shadow, excuse me, will remain black. Reduce the opacity to something a little bit lower. Let's go with 60%. Uncheck Use Global Light. Set the angle to 90 degrees. And again, distance 1 pixel, size 0 pixels. Just a little uh, kick of shadow there against the top of our impressed letters. We also want to drop a little color overlay over this. Let's set the color to white. Hit OK. Color overlay, white blend mode of soft light. So we're just sort of doubling up that soft light that we had earlier. And remember, we set our foreground color to white when we went and created the text. We're going to apply a gradient overlay here, and we're going to set the gradient to the foreground to transparent. We just want to go white to nothing, white to transparent. Hit OK. And right now, it's kicking that light into the bottom of the letters. We want it to drop that light over the top of the letters. So just tap the reverse key right there. And we're going to go blend mode. Let's try soft light. And I love it. You can see Without the gradient, with the gradient, just gives it a little kiss of light at the very top of those letters. Hit OK. Let's zoom out to 100%. And you can see there is our final finished button. A little large right now, but we could resize it if we like. And just like that, you've created a 3D pill button in Photoshop. We've used a ton of layer styles. We've got some vector layers happening there. And we've created a nice modern web button for you to use in any project you like. Thanks so much for checking this tutorial out. Make sure you go check out tutvid.com for more great free video tutorials. Thanks.